Good afternoon, everyone. And isn't it glorious, a bit of sunshine? Um, and as we're heading towards Palm Sunday, and we think of our Holy Week and Good Friday uh, and Easter Day, I wonder how to start today, because it's as though we're not there yet, you know. But I'd like to say, our story that we are to live out the whole time, Jesus' story. It is the greatest story that can ever be told. And it's his hero heroic work in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. He came to do what we could do not do for ourselves. That sounded a bit back to front. I'll repeat that. He came to do what we could not do ourselves. He came to save us. So I think to, to celebrate that, because it is a celebration. It's heartbreaking, Good Friday. It's painful, but Easter Day is coming. Um, so we'll let us stand. And we'll sing in our hearts here, but sing at home, please do. We've just been talking about singing. You need to sing. It's good for your lungs. It's just good for your well-being. All glory, Lord, and honour. Please stand. <laughs> be seated. As we come to meet with our Heavenly Father, let us just calm our thoughts, our minds, our spirits. And as we say it together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. I'm not sure whether Ian's now going to come and do the reading because I was a little bit unsure of the... It's May 1st, so... Oh, it's prayer. I do apologise. I'm so used to doing... I got used to doing prayers later. Excuse me, I need to pick up my prayers. <laughs> that was very unprofessional, wasn't it? But let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we do not always know what to ask for in our prayers, for there is so much that we do not know or understand. Yet we know that you are active in our world, moving in human hearts and in the events of history to fulfill your purpose. So we come now to you and in quiet faith, we place ourselves and our world into your hands. Lord, as there are concerns, we will be hit by a third wave of COVID. Help us all to continue to follow government advice and guidelines to keep everyone safe. And thank you, Jesus, for the display of human love and compassion that was seen yesterday as the nation acknowledged in a day of reflect and as a time of reflection in lighting a candle to honor those who were lost to this terrible COVID-19. As we receive our vaccines, we ask that the rollout continues to plan and those who are anxious overcome their concerns and accept, accept their job. Let us not forget the countries who do not have an NHS. They do not have resources to hand. They don't have the vaccine yet. May our government and other governments be generous to those who are in need. We raise other issues now as a new policing bill on de demonstrations is of concern, where violent scenes in Bristol have been reported. As aggression escalates as a result, officers being injured, Lord, we ask what is at the core of this? What is inciting people? Bring clarity and bring calm. Bring wisdom to those who have to make decisions. We also ask for your guidance as rules change in regard to migrants crossing the channel in these small boats. These people must be so desperate As our government tries to make good decisions, may your wisdom and pr compassion prevail. Lord, may your will be done, despite everything that conspires against it. All things are yours. We entrust them into your keeping. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our prayers turn to those who are sick, in hospital or awaiting treatment, especially Terry Burns, Ian Campbell, Marjorie Carruthers, John Chapman, Harriet Gaynor, 
Joan Green, Isabel Hart, Julie Rutter, and Heather Stokes. May your healing be upon them, dispelling any fear or anguish, and bring calm and peace into their very souls, their spirits. We pause so we can, as individuals, shoot up the names of people we know personally who need your healing touch. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing all the named arrowed prayers. We pray for the recently bereaved, especially the family and friends of Olga Conley, which is Elaine's, our curate's mum. And we pray a special blessing on Elaine as she's handling this situation. Uphold her, Heavenly Father. We pray for Carol McGibbon and Doris Sneath. May your peace that passes all understanding surround them all today and the coming weeks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we come to us, Lord. We don't know who or what will cross our path the rest of this day or this coming week. But we do know that you are our rock and our fortress. You are our shield and our strong tower. Help us to anchor ourselves in you today. Teach us how to stand strong in you. Help us to walk by your truth and not our feelings. Help us to embrace anything that comes our way as an opportunity to see you at work and as an opportunity to point others to you. Thank you that your love knows no bounds. Even when we fall short, you whisper your unconditional love deep into our souls, reminding us your mercies are new every morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for meeting with us this afternoon. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And I think it's now Ian. He's going to come and read Isaiah 25. Thank you very much, Gillian. Good afternoon and uh, hello to you who are watching at home. It's not Gillian's fault that she was caught out with the prayers. It's my fault. I'd forgotten to take that screen off. It appears later in the service as well. But we'll, we'll, uh, thank you, Gillian, for, for leading us and for those prayers. We're going to turn to God's Word, page 708, as it says on the screen. If you've got a Bible, you might have your own Bible at home. Uh, it might be around about 708, but uh, who knows. But it's uh, Isaiah 25, and just as you find it, uh, just to say that uh, this is a time, uh, 700 or so years before Jesus, the God's people, the nation of Judah, are surrounded by other nations that want to invade them. And uh, they're referred to as foreigners in this passage. Not that God is against foreigners generally. We're all a foreigner to somebody. But uh, it, that's, what, well, that's, that's, the, that's the people in mind, the people who are trying to attack God's people, the enemies of God and his people here. So Isaiah 25, I'm going to read all 12 verses. And, uh, and in a minute we'll focus on just a few of them. So from verse 1. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness you've done marvellous things, things planned long ago. You've made the city a heap of rubble, the fortified town a ruin, the foreigners' stronghold a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore strong peoples will honour you, cities of ruthless nations will revere you. You've been a refuge for the poor, a refuge for the needy in his distress, a shelter from the storm and a shade from the heat. For the breath of the ruthless is like a storm driving against a wall, and like the heat of the desert. You silence the uproar of foreigners, as heat is reduced by the shadow of a cloud, 
so the song of the roofless is stilled. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of his people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord, we trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. The hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain, but Moab will be trampled under him. His straw is trampled down in the manure. They will spread out their hands in it as a swimmer spreads out his hands to swim. God will bring down their pride despite the cleverness of their hands. He will bring down your high fortified walls and lay them low. He will bring them down to the ground, to the very dust. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand as we say the creed together, confirming our belief in God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. He was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in one, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated and Ian's going to come and speak to us. Right, well, I'm going to reflect on some of those words from Isaiah 25 and what they mean for us, and we need God's help, I do certainly, so let's pray. Uh, Lord God, we thank you that you're a God who speaks truth, and we are a world that is, we live in a world where there's confusion about what is the truth, what is the right way to go, and often we, we say we've got our own truth, but we want to hear your truth, because your truth is good and offers hope, and oh, we need hope. So please give us these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, are you hungry? Are you hungry or have you, have you, have you, are you fed, up? fed up? Fed up in the sense of you've eaten enough. Some of us are fed up in of, of lockdown, but are you getting hungry? I, I, I ate about, what time is it now? It's now 10 to 2, so it was about almost two hours, which uh, when you put it like that, it, it's time to eat again, isn't it? I've, I've got a biscuit or something, or is there, I'll, I'll be okay, I'll get home. We're going to have bread and wine in a minute anyway, and... Um, I always feel a bit self-conscious as a clergy person with communion because it says in the rubrics there's not supposed to be any bread or wine left. So I feel self-conscious scoffing myself. I, I try and share. You've had some big portions, I think, recently to try and share out the, the amount of bread. We'll do that in a minute. But uh, we feel hungry, don't we? You, you kind of feel that sense of, of hunger. Uh, every now and then you, you, you've had some food, but a few hours later you get hungry and you eat again. That's just a picture, isn't it, of the whole of life. We kind of are hungry. We hunger for things. We hunger for celebration. We hunger for fellowship. We hunger for hugs. We hunger for companionship. We hunger for experiences. We hunger for sunshine and warmth. We, we thirst as well. We could put it like that. We thirst for these things. 
If we're hungry, if we feel dissatisfied, if we're thirsting in some way, there's good news in this pa- passage from Isaiah. He says, verse 6, Isaiah, about a future vision that on this mountain, the mountain which would have been Zion, Jerusalem, where Isaiah would have been, on this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast, a feast of rich food. A feast of rich food, it says, for all people. So I said before the reading that God was speaking to his people and there were other people around trying to oppress them. But this is a banquet for everybody. Wherever you're from, wherever you're watching this later, whatever kind of person you are, however many qualifications you've got, whatever mistakes are in your past, whatever is ahead of you, this is a feast that God is offering to everybody. A feast of rich food for all peoples. It's described as a banquet of aged wine. Have you got any aged wine in your at home? Gillian's drunk all her wine. Uh, it doesn't last long, I guess. I don't know. We can ask her later, perhaps, about that. I mean, you might, aged wine, I mean, certainly with red wines, that's the good wine, isn't it? An aged wine, a good old wine. It, it, it's, it's, this is a good feast that God is offering here. The best of meats, sorry for vegetarians out there, but the best food is available here. It's, it, you know, Tesco's finest. Probably not even Tesco's, actually. Probably Waitrose. What's better than Waitrose? Mark, thank you, Mark. I, do you see, I've forgotten they existed, but Steph, uh, thank you for uh, uh, the posh food that Steph's got in her fridge from Mark's props at home. The best of meats, the finest of, of wines. So God is offering to satisfy us with the best of all things that is possibly on offer. Now, this is a picture of a future that is coming for God's people and is still coming for us. It is a future that Isaiah is seeing 700 years before Jesus that looks into Isaiah's future, into the future that came in Jesus Christ coming, and then into the far future for us, even 2,000 years, the other side of the cross of Jesus. Not only that, it is a banquet which is a great feast and celebration, but there is something that makes this banquet even more special than a really good party. Are you looking forward to a really good party at the end of this whole pandemic where you can have people in your house or maybe at church here or St John's or whichever church you go to wherever you're watching this being able to actually have people over next week you can have them in the garden but they might have to bring their own food and drink but it's up to you you know at least you can have them in the garden from next week all being well and uh, from the 21st of June I think it is all restrictions are gone all being well we pray we see we hope we wait we just have to see but this is something that's even bigger than that future we might look forward to this summer Because it says in verse 7, on this mountain and this place at Jerusalem in Zion, this future vision, he, God, will destroy the shroud that enfolds all people. What is this shroud or covering that wraps all people up? It says there, it is a sheet that covers all nations. What is it? It says in verse 8, he will swallow up death forever. God will destroy death forever. That is the promise. Not only will he destroy it, he will swallow it up. So the banquet we're being invited to, this heavenly banquet, let's say, that has got the best of food and drink at it, the reason that makes it so spectacular isn't just the great food that's on offer, wonderful as that would be, but it is a wonderful truth that at that point in the future, death will be gone. Death will be swallowed up. It already will have been swallowed up. It is as if we're being invited to the banquet that celebrates the fact that Something else has already been eaten. That is death itself. Now, you and I do not speak Hebrew or read Hebrew, but the Hebrew word for death is the word mut. Can you say that? Mut. I know where mut, can you say it? Yes, thank you. Even behind the mask, I can just mut. I think that's how you pronounce it. I I have done a bit of Hebrew. And um, I I know this, one of the things of this pandemic, pandemic, if you use Zoom, the, the phrase is, uh, you're on mute. You're on mute. You, you, have you had that, those of you who have used Zoom? You, you're on mute, we can't hear you. And uh, there you go, it's almost a catchphrase, isn't it? You're on mute. Well, we're all on mute. Well, that's true, isn't it? And, and painfully, some of us have lost loved ones over these last 12 months. That's the reflection we had yesterday. People who passed away. The excess deaths of what's it about 140 odd thousands and still counting that's just in this country alone and we all know that we're all on mut we're, we're all on 
for dying one day. But the wonderful thing about this future that God is speaking about is that mut, that death, will be swallowed up at that point. It'll be gone. We sometimes think of death as the thing that separates us. Well, it does separate us, doesn't it? One of the themes of this pandemic is the isolation. You felt isolated. I know you all have. I felt it as well. We felt cut off. Death is the ultimate isolation, isn't it? It cuts us off painfully. There have been loved ones who've been cut off for months and months and months, and sadly, tragically, they are now cut off permanently, in a sense, because they've sadly passed away. We've not seen them again. And they're covered from us. They're hidden from us. The shroud, the covering, is there. But God is saying that covering is going to be destroyed. That covering is going to be removed one day. The, the, the thing that separates us from each other that is death is going to be gone. It's going to be swallowed. And there's going to be this great banquet to celebrate that fact. Now we, of course, as Christians, as we approach Easter, know why that is the case. We know it is the case because Jesus himself has died for us. He has experienced this cutting off, this isolation of death for us, hasn't he? And that is because of our sin. Think about it for a minute. Sin cuts you off from people, doesn't it? When I sin against somebody else, I, I, maybe I say a careless word. I don't mean to, but it's just my nature sometimes in my sin. I, I, I say things I don't mean to say. We all do that. We all do things. We kind of think, oh, I shouldn't have done that. That, that was just, I wasn't thinking. That was careless. That's just me reverting back to the, the sinful nature. That's what sin does. It cuts us off because when I say that or do that against somebody, it cuts me off. Perhaps you've experienced that. Somebody's hurt you or you've hurt them and you're cut off. Sin isolates us. It also isolates us from God because when we sin, we say no to God and that cuts us off. It says we don't want him in our lives. But the thing is, God has dealt with sin and death that cuts us off by himself being cut off. As we remember, the bread and the wine reminds us Jesus himself, his body and blood was shed. He was cut off from life, though he is the giver of life, so that we can be reconnected, re rejoins. The, the, the isolation for us is over. And the shroud that covers us, that cuts us off, is lifted and gone through his own death, his death for our death. He has swallowed up death forever. On this mountain, on that mountain as Jesus died outside Jerusalem, he swallowed up death forever. The death that we cannot swallow, he swallowed for us. So that we can enjoy this feast, this celebration for all people. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Are you not looking forward to this future? When we do that, we will say, verse 9, Surely this, our God, this is our God. We trusted in him. He has saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. He is the only one that can deal with death. He is the only one who can deal with sin. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad in his salvation. So as we anticipate, hopefully, we just don't know, we'll see when it will happen, and, and you know, God, all, all things going well, later this summer we'll enjoy food together in some way, shape or form. That is just a flavour, a taste of this greater banquet to come. And on that day, not the day of the summer when we will rejoice, we can have food together, but let us anticipate a greater rejoicing to come and be glad in God's salvation. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you are inviting us to a banquet far greater than any banquet or party or uh, experience we will have later this summer we hope we'll be able to have. A, a, a party in the new creation where there's the best of everything because you have swallowed up death through the Lord Jesus Christ. That shroud, that isolation will be lifted for those of us who trust in Jesus, who say he is our God and he is our salvation, who we rejoice in. And Lord God, help us to look forward to that. Help us to be excited about that, to live for that, to want others to enjoy that alongside us. Please help us to long for these things, to be hungry for these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us confess the fact that we have cut ourselves off from each other and from God in the words of the confession, which I'll introduce uh, on, the next, uh, on the next slide, on the next screen that will appear. 
So you then who truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from this day forward in his holy ways, draw near with faith. Take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and lead us into that eternal life that we've glimpsed in Isaiah today. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So let us hear these words of comfort that Jesus Christ, our Saviour, says to all who truly in their hearts turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He also says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear what Paul says. This saying is true and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And uh, hear what John says. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous and he is the propitiation, the, the wrath bearer for our sins. So lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times, in all places, to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the entire world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he is betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. So in a moment, as you come forward, draw near with faith, and may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve your body and soul for everlasting life. Eat and drink in remembrance that he has died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us say together, Almighty God, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, send us out into the world in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We've come to our final hymn, and it's Crown Him with Many Crowns. So please stand and join in if you can. Sadly, we can't hear, but please stand. ask you to sit because what I want you to say is the same because I just think how we miss not being able to sing out loud could we have that last slide where it goes hail all hail redeemer hail I want all to say to say it out loud all hail redeemer hail for you have died for me your praise shall never never fail through all eternity you should feel uplifted because I am let us end with the peace. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be among you and remain with you always. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. You can sit now. <laughs>